boys. Well, I, I see you've all got here ahead of me and are all ready to enjoy a little singing and playing. You know, it just naturally does a body good to dismiss worries and cares from their minds ever so often, do a little singing. In fact, it's the singing that helps you forget your troubles. Did you ever notice that, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it's true. That's why we like to have you folks join us here in the old corral and listen to the singing. Join in if you like to. You're sure welcome. Boys, let's give them a snappy little song here, will you? Yeah. Yeah. Slim? Slim, why, well, I ain't heard Slim sing for a long Come in here, Slim. Suppose you sing that song about when payday rolls around. Yeah. Oh, You boys remember an old rustic dance of some kind? Oh, yeah. Get in here, Dolph, and let's hear it. you boys get together and sing one of those uh, bunkhouse choir songs first. Oh, oh, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute, yeah. boys, wait a minute. Look who's coming in the gate. Sally Foster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hello, Hello there, sweetheart. Oh, hello, Wade. What did you what say? What did I say? That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> First thing you know, you're going to have a breach of promise suit on your head. <laughs> Sally, how about you uh, joining the bunkhouse choir oh, and singing? Oh, Pappy, there's nothing I'd like better. <laughs> Well, that's fine. Let's have a little bit of riding and roping, boys. Uh-huh. We've been talking about it. Rock and roll, and 
and paddle all day long, swinging and a-singing to a cowboy song. Sally, she sure helped you. Isn't that gallus vision, Bill? A vision? <laughs> I'll say, she's a vision of loveliness, Wade. You're, you're right about that. And not one of those deceiving visions, either. And talking about deceiving visions reminds me of a, a little story I remember about the mirage. I'd like to tell you about it, kids. If you've never been on the Western Plains, folks, or the desert, you just can't imagine how deceiving those things really are. You look across the plains and you see a big lake of water, or you see a town with all the buildings standing out plain, and yet there ain't a darn thing there. Well, sir, on account of eastern folks not understanding this freak of nature, it proved to be the undoing of two eastern bandits one time. You see, old Jed Hoskins was one of these old-time prospectors who had been at it for years and had never struck a thing except just enough pay dirt to keep him looking for more. He'd leave town, a little cattle and mining town, and go back up in the foothills and stay several months and then come down with enough gold dust to pay up his debts, get on a, a good toot, and then load up his burrows and go out again. And the time that I'm thinking of was when he really made a strike, though. It was the middle of the day, and Ben was just coming down out of the foothills with a real bunch of gold this time. Yeah, he'd struck a mighty rich vein, which he knowed would make him a mighty rich man, so... Naturally, he was in high spirits. Well, he stopped to prepare his noonday meal and let his burrows rest when he sighted a couple of hombres riding over the sands towards him. And when they reached his camp, true to western hospitality, he invited them to get down off of their horses and have a snack with him, which they did. They told him they was Easterners and they was looking over the country for a spread for a ranch. Well, Jed was so worked up over his strike, it made him a mite careless. He told them it was foolish to locate on a ranch when they could go right back up in them hills and, and strike enough gold to make them rich beyond all dreams. He even went so far as to hint that he was coming down with a small fortune on his pack right now. Well, sir, right there, Jed's hospitality backfired on him. Them two fellas turned out to be skunks, bandits, hiding from the law back east. They took all of Jed's gold and pack burrs and everything and cast him afoot. They did leave him a little grub and most all of the water he had because they told him they could get more water just as soon as they reached the lake that they saw over there about three or four miles over the sands. Well, they started towards the lake. And Jed started slowly behind them after they got a good ways from him because he knew there was a stretch of desert before they reached any town or any water. And he knowing mirages in the west, he knowed what was going to happen. He catched up with them in four or five days. One of the bandits was about dead, and the other one was in pretty bad shape. Both horses was gone, all for the lack of water. The two burrs were still alive, though. Well, Jed strapped the one bandit across one of the pack burrs and continued on his way to town. He knew the water hole was about two miles away, so they reached home okay. Jed came in kind of triumphant, so to speak, that trip. He had all his gold, which was plenty, his two burrs, plus one bandit that never knew until too late what a mirage was or how deceiving they can be.
And time to call a halt to our song fest in the old corral for this time. But you can rest assured that it's been a pleasure to have you. Me and these waters will sure be pleased if you'll join again next time. And I'll try and prevail upon Sally to come over again, too. How about that, Sally? Can you oh, make it? Oh, Pap, I'll be here. You bet I will. <laughs> all right. Well, there you are, folks. This is Pappy Cheshire talking for all the boys and Sally. And so long, everybody. So long. Oh, <laughs>